Okay guys, so today we will start over chapter one, uh, ethical hacking. Uh, the chapter, the title of the chapter is ethical hacking overview and uh, we have mainly three agenda items in this chapter. Uh, starting with the types of hackers, role of ethical hacker, then we will start discuss the, uh, the, the different ethical hacking models. And there are mainly three ethical hacking models that we will be talking about. And the last is certifications of ethical hacking, like which certification we need to take after taking this course, which are the different certification that we can take and uh, what's the difference between different certifications and which certification is good for you. So we'll, we'll actually talk about uh, those kind of stuff. Um, starting with the role of ethical hackers and types of ethical hacker. The first thing is the ethical hacker or the first uh, key term that we will use over and over in this course and that is called ethical hacker. So we, we need to actually, I, I believe everybody's already familiar with the ethical hacker definition, uh, the different type of ethical hacker. So I, I just, I, I'm going to just brush up your previous knowledge regarding hacking. So ethical hacker, as you know, ethical hacker, they are non malicious hackers. Uh, they are the hackers who find vulnerabilities and pitfalls of system and report to concerned people. And they are often hired by a few companies and they ask them to find vulnerabilities in their systems and networks. That's basically what ethical hacker job is. So if, if you want to define ethical hacker, the uh, de definition of ethical hacker is basically ethical hacker is a professional, a professional hacker hired by companies to perform pen testing, penetration testing, pen testing and to find vulnerabilities in their systems. So that's basically uh, the typical definition of ethical hacker. Uh, again, pen testing means if a hacker break into the security of some network, vulnerability are the weaknesses, pitfall through which hackers, they, they can actually do the pen testing. They can, you know, break into the security. So hackers, they need to know all uh, the laws, state laws, federal laws about hacking, and they, they need to know all the, uh, they, they should have all the technical skills, uh, which are, unethical hacker might have okay uh, the next is the uh, definition pen testing or penetration test as we already talked about pen testing is basically where uh, hackers they find the weak point or weak link of organization and break into their security so that is basically called pen penetration test so pen test is basically get into companies get into companies network to find weakest link through which network can be compromised or there's their uh, servers can be compromised so another thing that you you need to know about pen testing is also uh, by in the pen testing uh, ethical hackers they uh, they break into the security of networks of the companies okay through the weak point of course vulnerability assessment that is very very important because through what i mean after doing vulnerability assessment hackers can do the pen test so firstly hackers they need to find vulnerabilities weaknesses and then they can break into the security like they can gain access without authorization and stuff like that so uh, vulnerability assessment is basically identification, identify pitfalls, or you can say weaknesses found in an application or a system or a system. So that is basically vulnerability assessment. Um, then there is another ter term that you guys will see over and over and that is called security test. Security test has nothing, it has nothing to do with the technical side of, uh, of the systems and all the stuff. In fact, security test is basically, you can say, 
it's basically analysis of the security policies, procedures, um, and find vulnerabilities in the policies or the procedures. For example, if uh, organization might have plenty of you know different uh, security policies, access control policies, or authentication policies, because of that, those uh, policies, uh, I mean, there could be some weaknesses, vulnerabilities can arise. So security test is nothing. It is basically analysis. Security test is analysis of companies security policies and procedures. And after doing analysis, they actually forward their report to the higher management to see, for example, if they find any vulnerability or any weakness in their uh, security test. Next is the, the types of hackers. I believe everybody is well familiar with the definition of hackers uh, and the types of different hackers like you guys are familiar with black hat hacker, white hat hacker, gray hat hackers and all those kind of stuff. I'm quickly give you a, a brief definition of these stuff. Hackers, whenever you see the word hacker, the first thing that comes in our mind is a black hat hacker in fact. So please remember all hackers are not bad hackers. Only the black hat hackers, or you can say malicious hackers, cyber terrorists, these are the people, cyber criminals, in fact, they are basically the bad people. So hackers are basically what they do, if you want to define hackers or black hat hacker or cyber criminals, what are they what they do? They access computer systems, or you can say networks without authorization okay and of course if you do that uh, you're doing a criminal offense and uh, of course um, you need to see the consequences if you do hacking of course so accessing computer systems and networking without authorization stealing information accessing the database stuff like that all these are basically hacking and according to um, Department of Justice of US US Department of Justice they actually they use a word, I mean, they defined a typical definition of hacking and that is called uh, illegal access to computers or networks. Networks, it's called hacking. And it's uh, a criminal offense, of course, felony. Uh, next is the crackers. Um, as you guys might um, uh, might you might have seen this word crackers before. Crackers are basically, for example, hackers. They uh, they often hire crackers to to uh, to crack the passwords because crackers they have strong mathematical skills. They can crack password. They are the designers of the system sometimes. So what they do, crackers. What they do is they have these sophisticated mathematical skills and they break into break into the systems to steal or destroy data, often hired by the black hat hackers. Ethical hackers that we already talked about, uh, they, performs, they perform the hacking activities with owner's permission. So they have full consent and then they perform hacking, they break into the security, find vulnerability and all that stuff. Um, as you everybody already knows, the script kiddies are inexperienced hacker, amateur hackers, uh, they, they don't have any programming expertise, hacking expertise, but they do hacking after watching few YouTube videos and stuff like that and try to trick the people by using the codes or the programs written by someone else. So you can say script kiddies are basically an experienced hacker. Hackers, amateur hackers having little hacking and programming expertise. 
expertise um, and try to trick the people use the code written by someone else so trick the people trick or you can say hack people or systems or their computers in fact using codes written by professional hacker a pro hacker um, and again that's that's a very important question the professional hacker or a pro hacker what kind of um, expertise they might have so they should have good understanding of networking uh, they should have a uh, good experience of Python C++ Perl language and beside all these languages they need to learn some scripting languages as well they should have some scripting uh, understanding of scripting language for example uh, VBS um, you can say PowerShell script shell script as well so these are basically some script that you need to you need to learn if you really want to be a good ethical hacker uh, we'll, we'll discuss uh, powershell script shell scripting vbs a little bit c plus plus and if time allows we'll also go to Perl as well uh, the last type of hacker that our book has discussed is the hacktivist. I believe everybody's well familiar with this uh, with this particular terminology hacktivist combination of two words hacker and activist activist so a person who hacks computers, a person who hacks computer, computer systems in fact, for political or social reasons. So sometimes they do hacking to expose uh, injustice, um, to just to expose a scam maybe sometimes. That's basically their agenda. Okay, the next is the, um, the job requirements for a pen tester. What are the different job requirements of a pen tester? Uh, as you know, for example, if you, if you just join as an attorney in a security department, security operations center, so probably you will be working on scanning just collect information about the targets, about their clients, about the companies. Uh, but the typical requirement of a pen testing is you need to actually find vulnerabilities, weaknesses or vulnerabilities. Plus you need to find pitfalls of their software and applications. What are what are the different applications? For example, if you design a new application, you need to uh, the ethical hackers or pen tester. They they try to find pitfalls of the software, their flaws, whether it crash or not, all these kind of stuff. Uh, then open ports. They actually identify which ports are open, which ports need to be closed, which ports need to be opened. So that's basically the responsibility of pen tester plus all application analysis, applications that the organization use. So they actually perform analysis of application as well. And again, the last is the reporting. Reporting plus recommendations. If they find any vulnerabilities, so how we can, we can avoid those vulnerabilities or how we can protect our system from being hacked. Okay, the next is the models of pen testing. As we discussed, there are three main types of models uh, uh, of uh, penetration testing. Uh, so being ethical hacker, you need to know which kind of model, I mean, because whenever you do ethical hacking for a company or you're doing pen testing for your client maybe, so you need to know which particular type of model you will be using to perform ethical hacking. Now there are three type of model. One is called white box, white box model, black box model, and the third one is gray box model. So if we talk about the white box model, white box model is a very trans, uh, it's a very tra uh, transparent, or you can say simple, simplest model. And uh, the ethical hack hacker, he has the full information about uh, the client's network, their routers, location of the routers, servers, operating system, and employees of the organization. They also know that uh, the pen testing has been, I mean, pen testing is going on. So they know that pen testing being conducted in the white box. So white box is basically 
it's as mentioned tester pen tester in fact pen tester has full information of organizational organizations network organization network and uh, for example the network diagram uh, it knows the router which kind of router is being being used they know the firewall switches uh, I mean they know the operating system running on the computers antivirus detail they know each and everything other than that the employees employees of that organization also aware of, aware of that pen testing so they also know uh, the pen testing is being conducted next is the black box model the black box model is basically kind of blind kind of model like uh, this is basically most of the time the hacker uh, the the companies they prefer to do this black box model in the black box model uh, the company management doesn't wish to disclose the pen testing is being conducted like they don't tell their employees that whether the uh, the pen testing is being conducted or not so employees even they're not aware of these this pen testing number one secondly uh, the hacker he has provided some basic access but not the complete detail it's the hacker has to find the details about the network location ip addresses all that detail is the responsibility of a hacker so black box model is basically when company management the top management company top management don't wish to disclose that pen testing is being conducted conducted plus um, employees are also not aware of it employees are unaware so they are also not aware whether the pen testing is being conducted or not uh, the next model is the gray box model as the name suggests you can see it's basically um, uh, in between where employees they are not aware of that the pen testing is being conducted but ethical hacker or pen tester he has some partial or incomplete information like he might have the uh, operating system detail but uh, he is not provided with the network diagram stuff like that so you can say it's in between again employees are unaware but hacker Ethical hackers, in fact, have partial info. They have the partial information about uh, about the network information of organization. Um, the the last thing for today is the certifications. Which certifications are uh, next is these certifications like which certification we should we we uh, we can take after taking this course uh, what exactly the contents we are following and stuff like that um, again the most important certification or the beginner certification is security plus come to your security plus and network plus uh, for security plus i believe uh, if you guys take 3300 and internet security course uh, we pretty much cover all the contents that we need for security plus um for i mean after having security plus and network plus the next certification and the contents that we got, we are we are going to cover in this course will be really really easy for you guys to to grasp or understand especially network fundamentals is very very important so uh, you have to I mean, I, I highly recommend everybody to at least take network secure network fundamental course along with that. If you didn't pass network course before, uh, the fundamental of networking course. If you are if you have already passed the course, uh, we we just have to. I'll just brush up your uh, your knowledge regarding TCP IP and all that. Uh, one of the very good certification is OSCP. It stands for offensive. 
security certified professional so that's one of the best certification um, for example if you pass security plus oscp should be your next target oscp or some people they they don't take security plus and they directly jump into oscp as well we are covering all the theoretical contents of oscp uh, but one of the thing that you need to know is oscp is more hands-on like you will be provided with few challenges like few scenarios and you have to complete the challenges as well besides i mean after having those mcqs based questions there will be some um some practical questions as well okay and it's the hands-on and most of the industry they they know the worth of oscp professional so if you have oscp i know that i mean i'm i'm 100 sure you can easily figure out a good job after having oscp certification recruiters will recruiters will uh, definitely they are going to hit you guys ceh uh, certified ethical hacker hacker certified ethical hacker and uh, this certification in order to pass this this is totally theoretical i mean uh, the, the exam of this certification is based on mcqs and it covers 22 domains that we will be covering in this course so this course is based on all those 22 domains and what are those 22 domains you will see the details in book let me just tell you uh, the legal issues uh, footprinting scanning all the ha hacking stuff like sniffing dos attacks web application attack sql injection stuff like that all the stuff of security related will be right here and our book is based on a ceh and specifically those 22 domains are discussed in detail next is the opst opst it stands for o s s t m m professional security tester this is again a very good certification um oss T, uh, T, T, uh, tmm it's basically it stands for open this it stands for open source security testing methodology manual so that particular certification is based on that security manual it's a hundred percent available most of the stuff is practical and linux based and uh, for to pass the certification of course there are some theoretical content there is no practical stuff in it uh for for exam but again after passing the course the companies will expect that you you have good understanding of all the linux tools and you know all that stuff the best certification in security field is called cissp again CSSP, first of all, it's, uh, it, is, it stands for uh, Certified Information System Security Professional. And this certification is offered by an institute called ISC Square. And this is basically international information system security. So that's basically ISS, ISC Square Institute name, which offers CISSP. Please remember one thing, don't rush for CISSP because uh, in order to take CISSP, you should have five years of cyber security or information security experience security experience is required so you don't have to rush for that okay number one number two uh, for cissp it's basically non-tech it's more like managerial like security project manage, man, uh, management and all that stuff so they will i mean they're not you don't you don't have to have technical skills and all that stuff in order to take that in fact some more managerial kind of skills are required for that um again cssp it's not that hard but uh, exam duration is five hours uh, which includes mainly 10 subdomains risk management asset management and all that stuff so mainly managerial kind of th things related to security 
And if you really want to be a CISO or manager, security manager, you need to take that certification at some stage. Of course, uh, it's not required uh, in the early, early stages of your career. Okay, so the last thing is the, um, the importance of the SANS Institute and uh, what kind of stuff, what kind of certification, what kind of things they actually provide. First of all, SANS, it stands for System Admin Audit uh, Network Security. So system admin audit network security is basically what SANS Institute is. What exactly the SANS Institute, what exactly they do? Uh, the SANS Institute, they actually disseminate research document like they publish uh, research documents research documents regarding network security plus vulnerabilities. Other than that, they do offer certification. They offer certifications. Even undergrad degrees, master degrees as well. So they do offer master degrees undergrad degrees plus certifications. Uh, other than that, they publish vulnerabilities, the new vulnerabilities, in fact, which are, which they call holes and also recommendations for avoidance. The most, uh, you can say, the most uh, popular document published by San Institute is their top 25 software errors or dangerous software flaws software flaws so if you visit their websites uh, if they visit san uh, www.sans.org uh, the website they, if you visit their website sans.org so under resources you can actually see these top 25 software flaws recommendation how we can avoid it and all that stuff no uh we have discussed many certifications, which I mean, uh, OSCP and all that stuff. So the most important thing is which certif certification is best. So it depends. Again, it depends upon the scenario and all that uh, scenario, uh, the, the company as well sometimes and the target audience as well. But what I believe the best certification, you should start with Security Plus. After Security Plus, CEH. And after CEH, CISSP, this is basically a, a typical path for, for the good uh, stuff. But the most, uh, again, again, uh, there are a few people, what they do is they actually memorize the questions sometimes. They just memorize the things and this past all these certifications. Trust me, I know a lot of people, um, they don't know what exactly the concept is, but they know the answers because they have memorized thousands of dumps and they passed all these certifications. I know personally many people. But you know what, what happens when they go to industry, uh, they trust me, trust me, they, uh, they really, uh, they, they actually face a hard time. It's really hard. Sometimes it's really hard for them to, to actually, um, you know, to survive maybe. Okay. So what basically our goal should be? I mean, even though if we are taking certification or not, the most important thing is you should have good understanding, understanding of computer networks. That's the most important thing. Your communication skills should be really good. Communication skills, because you have to communicate to your higher authorities, to other departments as well. Your writing plus verbal skills. And you are, should be, I mean, if you're stepping into security field, you are, you should be passionate about continuous learning. Because there are, I mean, Every day, every day, some hackers are even ethical hackers. They they actually uh, they find a new exploit, they find new vulnerability and stuff like that. And there are different type of skills that you have to learn in order for patch over those vulnerabilities. So you have you should be passionate about the uh, the continuous learning. 
Um, the last few things, what you can do legally, what is not allowed. Uh, the legally, what you can do is, uh, I mean, because laws, they actually vary, vary state to state. And these laws change very quickly. Like, I mean, just like the technology. So laws vary state to state. State to state, country to country. Okay, country to country, state to state, these laws vary and change very quickly change rapidly because technology changes rapidly so automatically we have to abreast with the technology like laws should be abreast with the technology so it's the responsibility of ethical hacker like you have to actually ethical hacker is responsible for to understand the interpretation interpretation of laws so you, this is your responsibility that you have to um, you have to actually address with all those laws. Uh, other than that, in some in some state, even in United States, if you are in California, if you have some, I mean, there are a few tools which I will name it later on. If you have some hacking tools in your computer, if you have certain hacking tools in your computer, that is illegal. Especially in California, they are very strict about it. Um, so rules are different. You have to check your state, uh, your state laws regarding all these cybersecurity stuff. Uh, we will, we we will do port scanning a lot. In port scanning, we find open ports. Uh, we find their operating system details and all that stuff. In some state, port scanning is absolutely uh, illegal. But in most of the state, like in forty states of U.S., they allow port scanning they allow and it is legal to do port scanning there are a few states which uh, where they don't allow like for example if you travel from new york to new jersey just cross the george washington bridge and you will be you will enter in the new jersey's laws and their laws are different and their laws i mean they don't allow anybody uh, to to do port scanning on the servers located in new jersey if you are in new jersey so there are i mean it it actually varies from state to state but 40 states in US, like most of the state, they allow it. Even US federal government. So federal federal government, they also allow uh, port scanning because they think these kind of infringements, uh, they don't violate the US constitution. Uh, but again, you have to address for that. Other than that, your ISP acceptable use policy. Some ISPs, they don't allow you to do port scanning using their network. So you have to read your ISPs, Internet Service Provider, acceptable use policies in order to, before you do the port scanning. And of course, you have to get in writing, uh, uh, you should have in writing contract before you do the port scanning and all. Uh, last thing, uh, which is, which I just, uh, I just want to discuss with you, ethical hacking in nutshell. What's basically the most important thing? Please do remember that uh, network skills are very, very important. You should have good understanding of networking. Your communication skills should be good so you can effectively communicate the weaknesses and recommendations so people can easily adapt that. Uh, the legal knowledge, it's of course the responsibility of ethical hacker and tools knowledge. These are extremely important and you can see the hierarchy. Like the tools knowledge have the least importance. I mean, of course, being ethical hacker, you need to learn all those tools. And in this course, we will more we will give more preference or we will give more priority to over, to learn, learning of the tools. But network skills, communication skills, and laws these are very very important. Even more important than the tools as well. Because if you know the tool, if you don't know the law, you can put yourself in trouble. So tools will come later. But okay, laws are very important, and we will discuss legal stuff as well and i will tell you guys which tool you can use and which tool which we we, we are uh, uh we, we cannot use in fact so that's it about chapter one we'll discuss chapter two in the next video